and welcome to the Talk of Fame podcast. And I'm so excited to introduce you to Juliana Morehouse. In 2023, she was will make well, she did make history as the first woman to compete in the Miss America pageant. She was crowned Miss Maine in 2022, and she married her longtime sweetheart back in April of this year and will compete for Miss USA this fall. In its 70 year history, Miss USA has never allowed married women to compete, but a recent change in rules will open the door for Juliana to be the first Miss Mrs. to compete in the Miss USA title. For she, um, most uh, former Miss USA contestants included Olivia Cupo, Cupo Halle Berry, and Allie Landry. Though Juliana serves as Miss Maine USA, her family has a rich history in the Carolinas, where her mom being a former Miss North Carolina USA, in which she grew up in uh, North Carolina, and she graduated from the College College of Charleston in South Carolina, and she and her husband were engaged on the steps of the St. Phillips Church in Charleston, which she got married at. For the ceremony, Juliana wore a gown by Israel designer Prina Tuma, it's hard to say the last name, but whose work is most known from television's Say Yes to the Dress and Sex in the City and worn by such celebrities as Jennifer Gardner, as Auntie and Teresa Juicy. I'm so bad with names. But as a philanthropist, Juliana serves as a community educator with the Alzheimer's organization, providing presentations across Maine on a disease and how to prevent it. And the six is a sixth leading cause of deaths in America, in which Alzheimer's closely impacted by Julia's family has prompted plans for her, for her to uh, assist in her in her effort for a cure. And Juliana will also speak to women across the state of Maine in which it means to live a fulfilling and impactful life. Um, congratulations, Julia, on getting married and becoming Miss Maine. That's so exciting that you had this accomplishment. And thank you so much for coming on to chat with us at uh, your busy schedule and taking the time. We really appreciate it. But um, like, how do you, I know like with having the, like starting a pageant career, there's always something that really inspires you to really get into that career field um but what was that like for you like what really kind of got you inspired to start getting into pageant so what sparked my interest was that my mom was Miss North Carolina USA in 1994 and so when I was about six years old I became aware that my mom had been Miss North Carolina and had competed at Miss USA and I became quite interested in that. And I met people that she competed at Miss USA with, one of whom is like an aunt to me now. And I just saw what it did for her life. You know, I saw the com community that she built. I saw the network that she built and what it did in helping her launch a career in television news. So that was where I learned about the pageant world. And I competed in my first pageant when I was about 16 and then I won Miss Main USA when I was 23, 23. So um, it was about a, what, seven year period that I competed. Ooh, that's incredible. Like with having and growing up with your mom, you know, showing you kind of the rigs of pageants and kind of where to go and meet people to help you. Like, how did that kind of impact you to kind of know what you're doing rather than not having someone not in the pageant world like how do you think it helped you helped you um it just helped me because I was being advised and mentored by someone who had done exactly what I wanted to do so um a lot of coach there are coaches in the pageant world who have never competed in a pageant and I still while I think there can be a lot to gain from them you know often the most can be gained from someone who has been there before and so I was just able to glean a lot from my mom. Ooh, I love that. Like, does she still, like, do kind of pageant things or is she kind of focused on television now? So she was in TV news for, I guess, seven, five to seven years. And then after a few years after she had me, uh, she left TV and stayed home. I'm one of four kids. So she, she stayed home with um, 
her children, but while she had us, she still did keep her foot in the professional and pageant world because she was a host and MC for about four or five pageants in the Northeast. So she would work pageant weekends. And it, so to answer your question, yeah, she, she did keep her foot in the pageant world. Ooh, that's incredible. I know with after like you become a pageant and as you get older and having kids, and I know a lot of people be like, oh, that's in the past. I'd rather just have my kids and just live a total different life than five years ago. Right. But like as you um got your title Miss Maine, like how have what kind of like you served and gave back to your community as Miss Maine? So Going into the Miss Maine U.S. pageant, Miss Maine U.S.A. pageant, I knew I wanted to continue doing a lot of work with the Alzheimer's Association. I had already been doing work with them because it's rampant in my family. Uh, my grandmother and my aunt had Alzheimer's disease at the same time when I was a child. So that, to put in perspective, was my mom's mother and sister were sick at the same time. And so that's where I had a passion for it. I give educational presentations throughout the community on what the disease is, how to prevent it. And I was actually fortunate enough to travel to Capitol Hill this year to meet with our state legislators and just talk to them about more funding and support for finding a cure because it's the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. But, um, and then, you know, the rest of my year is filled with we work with Best Buddies, which is a nonprofit organization that works with kids with special needs. I have gotten to go speak at high schools and just a, a multitude of activities like that. Ooh, like, like when you like um your aunt, and your mother got diagnosed. Well, your grandmother and right, you said. Yes. So with having them, like, kind of had that diagnosis, like, how did it kind of, like, impact you? Like, how did it, I know with having um someone with Alzheimer's or having a, a disease, it can make a toll on different family in different ways, mentally and physically, and how they want to make change for it. But, like, how did it really just impact you normally? So the way it impacted me was I was pretty young. I was in elementary school and my mom was in her 30s and was having more children. So she was caring for young kids and then also caring for her mom and sister. And so I just really had a lot of empathy for my mom because I saw how it was affecting her and just the grief that she carried around and I also it affected me because I kind of became second in command you know I'm the oldest so I had to help a lot you know I bathed my my grandma and my aunt I often took care of my younger siblings and so I really think it helped me grow grieve that when they're still alive and then you have to grieve their death when they when they actually die as well yeah, like actually, like when you lose a loved one to something like that and you really see your family in pain, like growing up, my grandma dealt with strokes and it changed her whole life. And basically with seeing her like that, it was like losing someone that you never knew, basically. Is right. how much they change and everything. It can really take a toll on yourself and your family. And to have to take that, that responsibility at a, a young age really can't take a toll on you since you're very young you're the oldest like it really could take a lot of value but can't really prepare you as you get older and be like okay if someone like mom my parents it's alzheimer's what am i going to do like what am i going to do with my, my youngest so like that might have to take that responsibility so it really takes that responding responsibility of good things to what might happen in the future but also it can take a toll really on your mental health for do taking basically a parenting job while you're in elementary school can really take a lot. Yes, definitely. And I mean, I don't want to, I'm super fortunate. I mean, I had a great childhood and I, and I feel very privileged and blessed, but you know, everyone goes through different things in their life. And that's just the, the, the thing that I went through that molded me. But I, I think if everyone looks deep enough, they all have something that they difficult, they experience. So I don't ever want to frame myself as a victim because I'm not, but that was just my reality. And that's what molded me into who I am.
Yeah, and everyone has a reality, to be quite honest with you. Because, of course, with everyone, everyone has different experiences and challenges they do when they grow up. Like, everyone has a different life they face and responsibility they have to face it from a young age to when you're an adult. And really, it really helped you to, it just, it really kind of is nothing bad, but it really just helps you to grow for some, like, into a better person having to do with this responsibility. But to go back into Miss Maine, like, what is kind of, like, your number one goal while you're Miss Maine? Like, is there anything, like, that stands out to you or impact that you want to make uh, while you're uh, Miss Maine? Well, I won Miss Maine over a year ago, so, so I've been at it for a while. But my my goals when I won were to do as much as I absolutely could with the Alzheimer's Association, which I, I feel like I have been able to do a lot with them between traveling to Capitol Hill, speaking around the community in Maine. And I, I got to MC their big fundraiser walk in Portland, Maine, which was wonderful. Um, I also, you know, wanted I love to speak. And so I, I've been able to speak at a lot of different places to young people. That was a big goal. And I specifically, there was, so the Bush family, the former president, they have a home in Maine. And I knew they had this a fundraising golf tournament in Maine to raise money for a local charity that is similar to Ronald McDonald House, but but it's not, it's just local to the area. So they house family members um, f- who have sick um, friends or family in the hospital. And I got to be a part of that golf tournament with the Bush family, which which that was really cool. And that was a bucket list item for me. And I really tried to soak everything absolutely possible that I can out of the year. Ooh, I'm literally so jealous you got to meet them. Oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Like, what like did you get to meet the Bush family or you just you just attended the tournament? I met George Bush, um, and I and I was able to meet a few of his extended family members. Yes. Ooh, what were they like? I'm kind of curious now. Is like what were they kind of like when you met them? Is that of course people have many different experiences. Right. I mean, he would he George Bush himself, I, I met very briefly, but he was very, he was very nice to me and let me, we, he, we took a photo and then I ended up spending the day with their family at their home and everyone I met in their family could not have been more hospitable and welcoming to me. You know, it, it was just a normal day for them. You know, we all just sat on the couch, but in my head, I was like, I'm this, I'm at George Bush's house, <laughs> you know, this yeah. is pretty cool. <laughs> but no, like, yeah, I'm literally cool. sitting in old president's house. Like, how do I act? Like, what should I right. do? Should I say, like, what manners I use this time around a for, for, former president of the United States? Right. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. That was definitely, and, you know, also with the year, I've made some great friends and relationships. And I would say that that's definitely a big part of the year, too. It really expands your network of people. Oh, it really does. Like, especially meeting the Bush family, it just means if you meet someone that's used to be in the White House, it really shows that you're doing something right, really. Because if you I'm really- trying. Yeah, we, we, everyone's trying to make a difference and always trying to do something that's important to everyone. Because, of course, like, of course, we're meeting the former president of the United States or any president of the world, okay? But it's like, it really is such a big deal. If I was meeting a president of the United States right now, I'd be like, I'm just going to pass out. I can't deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, especially with the Alzheimer's Association, like when did you kind of, I know you said you started working before them, before that, but how did you kind of get involved with them? So I would say my involvement started with them on a smaller scale when I was in high school. I had hosted a fundraising uh bowling tournament at, with my high school and raised a few thousand dollars for the association in North Carolina. And then I did a lot of their walks to end Alzheimer's, which raised money for the association. And then when I came to Maine, I got heavily involved with them as a volunteer, just doing all kinds of speaking and, and educational presentations. And so I feel like I've learned a lot and I actually 
you know, through what I learned and some of it's infor- like information and education I seek out on my own, just about brain health in general. But mm-hmm. I had a close family friend whose mother was showing signs of the disease and I was able to help them with some of the knowledge that I have to help her get a proper diagnosis, which I mean, it's sad that she was diagnosed, but I'm happy that I was there to help guide them to sort of expedite the process and getting a proper diagnosis. Yeah, like it's great that they really came to you to ask. Because of course, as an advocate, you learn so much every day about different things involving Alzheimer's. But what right. I know with many facts about Alzheimer's, it really surprises you in many ways. Like I know when I was reading some research early this morning, preparing for this interview, I was like, uh what like are you serious but like what um or some things related to alzheimer's or resources that kind of surprised you throughout the process um i mean there's nothing that surprised me because i had seen the disease up close yeah but what i have come to learn as i've gotten older and been around the association and different things I've read is that, you know, I was under the impression when I was growing up that it pretty much just happened to you. Like there was nothing you could do to prevent the disease, but, you know, more and more research and studies are coming out in regards to all disease, really Alzheimer's disease, cancer, anything of that ilk that your lifestyle choices can prevent the onset of these types of diseases. And it has to do with exercise and with your diet. People think that it doesn't matter because it's small choices every day, but it does. I mean, I've seen brain scans side by side of people who, you know, don't eat certain types of food and that that do exercise and you you really do see a difference in their brain. So I would say that, I don't know that that surprised me, but it's something that, that I learned. Yeah, especially with exercising and everything, like the way you you like eat, like I, like I, for to be quite honest with you, I was never, I was always a person that loves junk food and all hard food, and I never realized as I got older with my job because I work with a company that donates food to locally. If you can get food for lo- like from for local farmers, that's a whole different story I can go in later on. But like, especially when we're working at a job and my my sister has autoimmune disease. So really has um really awakened me. But of course, with me having like having an addiction with junk foods, it really has, does make a difference in your health, like you said. So of course, the way you exercise and in the way you eat plays a valid role in how you kind of live every single day and how, you know, like you might get diagnosed with these disease, like cancers, Alzheimer's, like, um, like there's so many things you can get diagnosed with if you're not exercising or eating the right foods. But I'm, I'm kind of curious as someone that's not really that doesn't know about the Alzheimer's community that much, but um, like, like in your opinion, like, what are the best issues? Like, what are the biggest issues in the Alzheimer's community right now? Um, well, at first, I would say a misconception about what the disease even is. Um, I, you know, a lot of people think that. First of all, they think that memory loss is synonymous with getting older, which is not true. Memory loss should not be a normal part of aging because it's yeah. not. The other misconception is that, you know, people think that if you, you know, when you set down your car keys and you can't find them or can't remember where you put them, like, oh no, like people will joke, I must be getting Alzheimer's disease. And that that's a little forgetfulness is not a yeah. sign of the disease. It's really when you're, the memory loss reaches a point where it's interfering with your daily tasks and you don't know how to do things that you once knew how to do. Like, you are putting your clothes on backwards. You're don't know how to bathe yourself. You're like getting your lipstick outside the lines every day. That that type of thing. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that it's terminal. It's a terminal disease. You know, if nothing else kills you first, Alzheimer's disease will kill you. And 
in some cases, I mean, my aunt, when she passed away, she was a vegetable. I mean, she, she didn't walk. She was in a chair. She couldn't speak. Um, and then another misconception is that by and large, it is people, you know, over 65 that are getting the disease. But my aunt was in her late forties when she was diagnosed and she died when she was 53. So there are, that's called early onset Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. And so that is more common than people anticipate. Yeah. Because of course we're early Alzheimer's. Um, you, you sometimes do catch it in your late forties or, or like early forties, but it's mostly very much known for people in probably in your late fifties, early sixties. But having Alzheimer's, you it can make you look like a vegetable. Like sometimes you just sit there and just stare at them, like, mm, I'm not going to say anything. You speak all you want, but like, have you ever like? Did you ever see Grey's Anatomy? I I was wondering that. If, like, did yeah. you um see the storyline um about Alice Gray and her Alzheimer's? Like, like did that have like it like impact on you or surprise you in a way, or it was kind of like, oh, this is kind of similar to what my aunt and grandmother went like kind of similar to like their story yeah it didn't surprise me I thought it was a pretty good to depiction of I mean of course you know it's Hollywood but it, it was a pretty good depiction of, of what the disease is like for sure yeah like I would I before I watched the show I was never really didn't know what Alzheimer's was like to be quite honest with you I was a person that was like oh it's Alzheimer's like you know, it's just a disease that affects a lot of people. But when I saw Grace Vanity in that episode, I'm like, that's what Alzheimer's is like. It really surprised me how much it impacts so many people in different ways. And that it takes their lives every single day, which is so heartbreaking. But as um you like prepare for Miss America and going into Miss America, um what does kind of like your behind the scenes look like preparing for it? So it's actually, I'm, I, it already happened and I competed for Miss USA. So Miss USA and Miss America are two different pageants. Mm -hmm. um, they're the two most well-known national pageants that the main differences are that Miss America is a nonprofit organization and it's a scholarship organization. Yeah. So women compete to win scholarships and, they have the talent portion of the competition as where Miss USA does not. And whoever wins Miss USA goes to Miss Universe and Miss USA is a business. Um, so those are the main distinctions between the two. But I competed in September and a lot of my preparation was, you know, getting my body in shape for the swimsuit competition, styling my whole wardrobe for while I was there keeping up on current events and being able to speak about what was going on in the world. Um, it was most of all getting in the right mental headspace because just like with sports and with really anything you're pursuing in life, a lot of it is being in the right mental headspace. Mm -hmm. Like I know for like, I know for you as well, like, I don't, like I'm a person that always like doesn't know how to get the right headspace when I need it in the moment. Like I don't know if you dealt with the same thing as well, but when I'm doing an event or something, I'm just like in my own world at some point. So I'm just like, la 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 la, like this in my own moment. But how'd you kind of, like as a pers person that kind of had to deal with that, I'm kind of curious to see how did you get in the right meds like headspace for those type of things? Well, I would say not, maybe not for everyone, but for me, you know, just age and experience definitely helped. Um, each year I became older, competing in the pageant world became a little bit easier mentally. And I would say one of the biggest shifts for me was that when I competed for Miss Maine USA, the pageant was no longer an idol for me. So it was no longer something that, oh my gosh, I have to have this. Um, it was, I want this and I'm going to come prepared to the best of my ability, but I don't need it because yeah. I'm grateful for what I do have. I like my life and I don't, I'm not desperate. And I would say the, the foundation of all that is my faith, you know, I've had a faith it, since I was a teenager, but it's grown. And 
I'm not that old. I'm 24. But at this age, I can already look back on my life and see where, you know, if I didn't get something or something didn't happen for me where I am glad that I didn't in hindsight, because now I I'm able to see a bigger picture. And so I just have a lot of faith in God and the preordained plan for my life. I, it's hard to accept mm-hmm. in the moment, but I've already seen where it has triumphed. So I, who am I to doubt him? Yeah, like I wish I had that headspace. Like I don't know why, but I'm the person that loves to doubt everything I do and what I go into. But of course, as a 17 year old teenager, it's always a matter of okay, do I actually need this or do I actually want it right now? But do I actually need it later in life? It's something not a lot of people realize in that moment be like okay I'm working hard for this so I actually need to do this or do I or can I find something better to do with my time than training or doing something for this right right it's definitely a a balancing act for sure it really is it really is a balancing act like I am a person that hate that is that bad balancer with things so it really kind of is a big balance booster and okay do I can I take this or can I take this like it is over exaggerating what and what now you want to do but um the last thing I wanted to ask you before we head off is what is kind of like your plans for the future as Miss Maine before you're giving the other special lady the crown? So I, we don't know when the next state pageant is. I don't know when I'll be crowning the next girl. It'll probably be late spring of 2024. But I have some fun, fun appearances lined up. I some Christmas parades this weekend, a photo shoot, and probably a few more Alzheimer's engagements and some sporting events. So fun things like that. And then just Going forward with me and and my life, I'm working on two master's degrees, one in theology and one in clinical mental health counseling. So my goal is to be a a therapist and counselor. So that's what I'm working on right now to complete after I give up my title. And I also love to write. I just wrote a freelance piece for a women's magazine that I love. And so I'm hoping to continue r- writing some freelance pieces for them as well. Ooh, I can't wait to see it. Like, did you just start your bachelor's degree? Like, are you kind of like a freshman or sophomore or are you ready to kind of graduate from them? So I'm working on my master's. So, oh, so I, master's, have, that's right. I, yeah. I have my bachelor's degree, um, but I started one of them like little less than a year before I won Miss Maine. And then I took a lighter class load while I was preparing for Miss USA. And then I started my counseling master's program as well in the middle of my years, Miss Maine. So I've just been kind of doing a balancing act. I'll finish both within two years. Um, and that'll include my all my clinical work as well. Ooh, that seems so exotic. It'll be like, it'll just be there before you know it, right? Like this crazy how time goes by so fast, which is crazy. But I want to thank you so much, Juliana, for coming on the podcast. It was literally such an honor to have you. Like everything you're doing for all times was the solicitation. And to me as well is such is making a really big difference. Um, it really like it's definitely needs to be more talked about with Alzheimer's because I know personally a lot not a lot of people know specifically kind of what Alzheimer's is. So really we need more people like you speaking about this topic. And I want to thank everyone for coming on and listening. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode and thank you so much for coming on. I love speaking with you. Thank you for having me and thanks for giving me a platform to share my story. Of course. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much again. You too.